Earlier today, I covered general information on steps to diagnose plant poisonings and discussed the types of plant toxins likely to cause sudden death syndromes. For the second part of my presentation today, I'll be continuing directly on and we'll cover the presenting syndromes of acute liver necrosis, nervous signs, nephrosis and chronic ill thrift. Acute liver necrosis is a common cause of sudden death, with the plant toxins listed here being the major causes in livestock across northern Australia. Sources of hepatotoxicity in livestock are numerous and varied and include plants, cyanobacteria, fungi, and even insects, such as with sawfly larval poisoning. Plants most likely to be responsible for liver necrosis in livestock in the north include MAM containing cycads in the genera of Cycas, Macrosamia, Boenia, and Lepidosamia, Heromophila deserti, and some closely related species of Myoporum that contain furosesquiterpenes, Nagura burr, Bathurst burr and sunflower daisy, which contain diterpenoid glycosides, and other less common causes, at least in northern livestock, include poison peach, gossypole, mintweed, and PA containing plants such as the crotillarias, although chronic hepatotoxicity causing ill thrift and or nervous signs are more likely to be seen than acute liver necrosis, and I'll discuss this later. Poisoning from plant sources generally involves access by hungry stock, as many of the plants containing hepatotoxins are not very palatable. For some plants, the toxins are concentrated into a particular stage of the plant, such as young leaves and seeds of cycads, or cotyledonary um, leaves of nagura burr. Therefore, poisoning is more likely to occur when these plant stages are present and ingested in sufficient quantities. Animals poisoned by hepatotoxins tend to stop eating and become dull and lethargic within as little as a few hours after consuming a toxic dose. Ruminal atony and signs of abdominal pain may be seen, while mucous membranes may appear jaundiced. In animals receiving a fatal dose, death usually occurs within 24 hours, although in some animals surviving longer, nervous signs associated with hepatic encephalopathy may be observed prior to death. Consumption coagulopathy will often result in widespread hemorrhages throughout the carcass. This finding often leads to differential diagnoses, including anthrax and acute clostridial diseases. In animals with acute sublethal or low level chronic exposures, phototensitization and ill thrift may also be seen. A diagnosis of hepatotoxicity can generally be made at necropsy. Unlike poisonings previously described under the sudden death syndrome, where gross pathology is generally unremarkable, typical necropsy findings in animals having died of acute liver necrosis include a swollen and congested liver with rounded edges. And you may notice the liver has a distinct mottled pattern, particularly on the cut surface. There is generally also edema of the wall of the gallbladder, and there may be hemorrhages in the intestines or throughout the carcass. Death due to acute liver necrosis can be confirmed by histological examination of the liver. Microscopically, the pattern of acute liver necrosis can vary widely between cases. The patterns of necrosis we see in descending order are periasana, periportal, panasana, and midzonal. And although the pattern is not specific for any particular hepatotoxin, it may be useful in narrowing the list of differentials. Collection of rumen contents can be used for toxin assay or botanical, botanical identification of plant fragments. Because animals often die so acutely, the causative plant generally will still be present within the animal's rumen. Nervous signs are another common syndrome of plant poisonings, with ataxia being the most common clinical presentation. Ataxia is typically defined as the presence of abnormal and uncoordinated movements. This results in the animals appearing unsteady and having a staggering gait. Although this is strictly a neurological disorder due to damage to the spinal cord or cerebellum, clinically ataxia may be difficult to differentiate from weakness or other gait abnormalities due to non-neurological causes. 
Less commonly, we may see tremors or seizures associated with plant toxicoses. The plants likely to cause nervous signs in ruminants in the northern half of Australia include cycads, belonging to the cycas, macrosamia and boenia genera, which are responsible for the syndrome commonly referred to as zamia staggers, and xanthorrhea and lamandra plant species, the cause of the syndrome referred to as womps. While for horses, poisonings are associated with plants containing pyrrolizidine alkaloids, in particular the crotillaria, which produce a syndrome referred to as walkabout disease or Kimberley horse disease, and Indigophora linnaei, the cause of Birdsville horse disease. The toxin in cycads responsible for Zamia staggers is unidentified, although it is suspected to be a derivative of MAM produced by microbial enzymes. And as expected, the plant parts that contain the highest concentrations of MAM, namely the young leaves and seeds, are also the most likely to be associated with the nervous syndrome. The reason for some animals succumbing to acute liver necrosis and others to staggers may simply be a matter of dose. Consumption of the flower spikes of grass trees are considered the greatest risk of causing womps in cattle, with the onset of clinical disease seen up to 10 weeks after ingestion of a toxic dose. Because the plants causing nervous signs in horses are legumes, they tend to be hazardous when they become a dominant component of the pasture during droughts or in the dry season, particularly when light rain stimulates growth of their rootstock, but there's insufficient rain to cause significant growth of other pasture species. And despite the crotillarias that cause walkabout disease being predominant during the dry seasons, because of the delayed onset of clinical signs, cases are seen mostly the following wet season. Cattle affected by zamia staggers develop an irregular goose stepping gait and often knuckle at the fetlocks. The syndrome is irreversible and animals may develop substantial wasting of the hindquarters leading to paralysis with death occurring because they cannot access food and water. Womps was named after the sound made by affected cattle hitting the ground after falling over. They tend to lose weight and develop a sideways lurching fall easily and have difficulty rising. Unlike Zamia staggers, this poisoning appears reversible over several weeks if animals are provided with supportive care. Urinary incontinence may be seen with poisoning by both syndromes. In horses, those poisoned by pyrrolizidine alkaloids tend to develop hepatic encephalopathy due to chronic liver disease. Affected horses may present with a dummy syndrome but suddenly become manic and aggressive when handled. They may be incoordinated or walk compulsively. While Birdsville horse disease tends to cause marked gait abnormalities, horses develop ataxia and will toe drag their hind limbs while forelimbs are hypermetric. Horses affected by either syndrome are often lethargic and may show significant weight loss. A small number of pyrrolizidine alkaloids target the lungs including those found in Crotillaria juncia and Crotillaria crispata or Kimberley horse poison. Chronic interstitial fibrosis and emphysema may cause coughing, dyspnea and rails in a syndrome named Yarkseet from the disease in South Africa. Of note is that indigophora plants contain the hepatotoxin indospicine, which although not responsible for the nervous syndrome seen in horses, it does accumulate in their tissues and feeding of contaminated horse meat is highly fatal to dogs. Diagnosis of these nervous conditions in both ruminants and horses is generally made in the field based on the presenting clinical syndrome and a history of exposure to the responsible plants. Laboratory testing for biochemical evidence of liver damage may be a useful anti-mortem marker for hepatic encephalopathy cases. However, confirmation should be attempted through histological examination of the brain, spinal cord and liver. Wallerian degeneration of the spinal cord, whilst a nonspecific change, is a prominent feature of cycad and chronic cyanide poisoning. Moving on to the fourth syndrome of nephrosis. Like the liver, renal tubules are particularly susceptible to a wide variety of toxic agents 
as a consequence of their high metabolic activity and exposure to agents in the ultrafiltrate they absorb. The most likely causes of primary renal disease in livestock across northern parts of Australia are soluble oxalates, which have already been discussed under the sudden death syndrome, hydrolyzable tannins present in yellowwood, or iforestine from isotropous species. Other less common causes are listed, noting that both lantana and steroidal saponins may cause kidney lesions in addition to being notorious causes of hepatogenous photosensitization. Livestock poisonings due to hydrolyzable tannins present in yellow wood are restricted to its geographical location in central Queensland. Cattle are most commonly affected, although other livestock species are considered susceptible. Large intakes of hydrolyzable tannins are required before poisoning occurs and root suckers or fallen trees are the likely culprits. The common side of primary damage from hydrolyzable tannins is the kidneys, with secondary effects seen in the gastrointestinal tract. Affected animals will lose appetite, become dehydrated and gradually lose weight. They pass large volumes of urine and may have diarrhea. Blood may be observed in both urine and feces. The animals may also accumulate fluid causing ascites, hydrothorax or edema of the perineum and brisket. In the early stages of poisoning, the liver may be affected and animals may be jaundiced or have photosensitization. Producers and veterinarians in the geographical range of yellowwood should be suspicious of it being a source of poisoning in animals presenting with signs of renal failure. And a tentative diagnosis may be supported by the finding of kidneys that are shrunken and sometimes discolored. There may be fluid buildup in body cavities and erosions and ulcers present along the gastrointestinal tract related to uremia. In early cases where animals are photosensitized, the liver may be swollen and pale with jaundice of the liver or carcass. Kidney and liver pathology, although not specific, will support the clinical and gross pathology picture. So moving on to iforestine as a cause of nephrosis. This nephrotoxic alkaloid was named iforestine because it was isolated from Isotropus forestii. The consistent nephrotoxic effects of a number of species in this genus indicate that they all potentially contain this compound. The species associated with poisoning in sheep and cattle across northern Western Australia and in the Northern Territory is Itropus atroperperea, or poison sage. The plant is very palatable and travelling livestock are most at risk. Poisoning is generally seen in late winter or early summer following exposure to flowering or fruiting plants. Obviously the site of effect is the kidneys, although in some cases there may also be coagulative necrosis in the liver or acute focal myocardial necrosis. Severe nephrosis may produce secondary effects that are seen in the gastrointestinal tract. Affected animals will lose appetite and become lethargic may develop diarrhoea that contains blood or mucus, the urine output slows and then stops, and the animals become weak and collapse, typically dying in two to seven days after exposure. Rapid deaths are occasionally seen, and in these cases it's thought to be due to the effects on the heart. Animals may accumulate fluid causing ascites, hydrothorax and pulmonary edema. Similarly to yellowwood, producers and veterinarians in the geographical range of isotropous plants should be suspicious of it being the cause of poisoning in animals with signs of acute renal failure. Postmortem examination reveals pale, swollen kidneys and perirenal edema. There may also be buildup of fluid in body cavities and congestion and hemorrhage of the mucosa of the abomasum and intestines. Histopathology will reveal necrosis of proximal and renal convoluted tubules, and although not specific, will support the clinical and gross pathology picture. In some cases, there may also be scattered periasana necrosis, focal myocardial necrosis, 
and pulmonary edema. So the next presenting syndrome is chronic ill thrift. Exposure to plants containing pyrrolizidina alkaloids, or PAs for short, is a common occurrence across Northern Australia, and PAs are considered as amongst the most important toxins affecting livestock in Australia and the world. While PAs and other hepatotoxins such as MAM are responsible for chronic ill thrift related to liver damage, hydrolyzable tannins in yellow wood and soluble oxalates, both previously discussed, that cause nephrosis may also cause ill thrift. The most common sources of PAs across Northern Australia include numerous species of crotillaria, heliotropes, Trichodesma zelanicum or camel bush, and Senechia species. All production species are susceptible to poisoning, with pigs being the most susceptible. Cattle and horses are approximately 14 times more resistant than pigs, while sheep and goats are at least tenfold more resistant than cattle, so about 150 times more resistant than pigs. Plants containing hazardous quantities of PAs are usually very unpalatable and so not readily eaten. Two main circumstances promote their consumption. One being a lack of alternative wholesome fodder, such as during the dry season or droughts. And two, contamination of hay, silage or grains with pyrrolizid and alkaloid containing plants. PA is accumulative in their toxic effects, with the onset of clinical signs in most cases being delayed by as much as up to 18 months after exposure. So the highly reactive pyrrolic metabolites cause cell necrosis, bind to DNA and halt mitosis, producing megalocytes. The metabolites can also damage blood vessels. The primary site of oxidative damage of PAs is the liver and also to a lesser extent in kidneys and lungs. These effects are slow in onset and result in a chronically damaged organ with much scar tissue and greatly diminished numbers of and large cells. Cattle usually suffer from weight loss and diarrhea, which may be persistent and cause straining. Unlike in horses, where nervous signs dominate, hepatic encephalopathy is generally only seen in fulminant cases of liver failure in ruminants. The chronic effects of liver failure in sheep predispose this species in particular to hemolysis due to copper poisoning. Because poisoning often takes months after the plants have been eaten for signs to appear, it can be very difficult to identify the source of poisoning. Offending plants may have died or been overtaken by other dominant species before the animal becomes ill. Necropsy will reveal a wasted carcass with evidence of chronic hepatopathy, such as liver fibrosis, nodular regeneration and jaundice. Microscopic examination of the liver will show the typical changes of megalocytosis, biliary ductular hyperplasia and portal fibrosis. Of note is that differentials for these particular histological changes in combination include aflatoxicosis and chronic MAM exposure from cycads. Detection of pyrrolic metabolites in liver may be available at specialised laboratories. That completes my second presentation and covers the most common poisoning syndrome seen in northern livestock. I will try to get a printed resource available to Pauline to share with today's attendees that may be useful as a quick reference guide. I would like to acknowledge Dr Ross McKenzie, who not only fostered my interest in toxicology as an undergraduate and later mentored me in this area, but who generously provided his lecture materials and PowerPoint slides for me to use in today's presentation. The following references were also used and are recommended for veterinary practices to have available for their staff. Thank you.